Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on X at Movies TV Mad and on Instagram and on Threads at Movies TV Mad X. A very warm welcome to Friday's edition of the Movies TV Mad Daily. As I was saying it there, I was thinking, what day am I on? I'm always making these videos a day before they actually go out, so I don't even know. So I think you're watching this on Friday. I actually have no idea what day this is. Literally, I don't even know what day it is today. Anyway, a very warm welcome to the Movies TV Mad Daily. I want to talk about Smallville, but I'm very, very triggered. Very, very triggered right now. I saw an interview with Michael Rosenbaum on Screen Rant, very famous publication, talking about James Gunn, Nicholas Holt, his idea and Tom's idea to do an animated Smallville show, which would be very, very exciting. Now, in the interview, Michael said that it's not going to happen right now because it's not the right time. No, Michael, of course it's not the right time because James Gunn is working on an insular connected universe. And there's no place in that playpen for anyone else to play in. It's his vision and nobody else's, with DC Elseworlds being a dumping ground for the Batman and Joker. We already know that. Where's the other Elseworlds projects? They haven't actually announced anything. By the way, James Gunn did his normal teasing, another comic book panel. This time, it's Dead Man. It's not the first time he's teased Dead Man, by the way, so I thought I'd update you with that. So, again, it's just inspiration. Doesn't mean he's adapting Dead Man. Maybe he is. I don't know. But who knows? So, anyway, so Michael Rosenbaum's doing this interview. Listen, as you mostly know, if you know me very well and you come into this platform a lot, I love Smallville. Smallville is my, my second favourite live action adaption and interpretation of the Superman myth with what Zack Snyder with what Zack Snyder did coming in third. I love Smallville. Smallville meant a hell of a lot to me. I can't even explain to you what Smallville meant to me in my life. It seems whenever I'm at my lowest, Superman always finds a way to save me. And within Smallville Superman saved me again. So Smallville is a very important thing to me. This is why I was personally offended by the series finale. I've got used to it. I've let it go now. It's not so bad. I'm seeing it with more of a, let's say, a loving eye now. But it's not without its issues. We will know that. Um, that's why I felt betrayed by the crisis on infinite Earths episode where we saw Tom Welling come back, where he's wearing a blue ring and he's not Superman anymore. Ten years of Smallville wasted so Greg Belanti could bring him back and domesticate him because Belanti's obsessed with domesticating Superman. But we didn't waste ten years of Smallville because that shit isn't canon and we all know that. Anyway, let's stay on course. So Michael Rosenbaum and Tom Welling do this beautiful Smallville podcast once a week where they review, they review a Smallville episode in the order they were broadcast in. It's brilliant. You should absolutely check it out. They've also been developing an animated series of Smallville. Obviously, there's many reasons why they do an animated series. Tom will never put the costume on. Worst kept series within the Smallville fandom. So at least with this way, maybe we'll see him in the costume in animated form. Who knows? We don't even know where this would be set. Would it be Smallville in the Smallville era? Would it be in the Metropolis era? Would it be in between? I don't know what they're planning. Apparently, um, the creators of Smallville, Alfred Goff and Miles Miller, are behind this project. Now, so when they first launched the podcast, they were talking about taking this to WB. In this interview, he said it's not the right time. And I've explained to you why. There's no chance of us ever getting a Smallville animated series or a Smallville live action series. Now, in a way, I'm comfortable with that. We had a decade of Smallville. It was outstanding. 
It was beautiful, right? A brilliant show. I don't need to see a relaunch or a reboot. Would it even work in current times? Would it? When a man can't even save a woman anymore? When we've got a Netflix movie called Damsel, which is a man hating 90 minutes or so? Could we have a TV show about a character who saves people? Can he only save men? Is it now illegal to save women, right? I, 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 you know, so Smallville worked because it was done in a different time when you had, you know, brave, daring, you know, CEOs of Warner Brothers and Warner Brothers Television like Peter Roth. Without Peter Roth, Smallville would never have happened. You can't do shows like that anymore. Imagine it. They were, they were pumping out 20 plus episodes a year or around that. That is not easy. And we were getting, sh just imagine this, right? They were pumping out 24 shows of 24 a year. 24 episodes of television that looked like films and they were amazing. They can't even plump out eight episodes of decent TV anymore. And Smallville and 24 and Alias and Fringe and all these shows were pumping out quality. Do you know how hard it is to make 20 episodes of something? If you knew what it took to make a TV show, it's fast. It's a factory. How they ever got any quality from these shows, I don't know. But these people were hardworking geniuses. From the first moment I watched Smallville, I knew I was watching a new kind of era of television, a quality era where TV looked like features that looked like you were going to the cinema. Amazing. Now, Michael Rosenbaum recently interviewed Nicholas Holt, who's playing Lex Luthor in James Gunn's Superman. Now, I love Michael. I Michael is my hero, and when he was in Smallville, I was obsessed with him. Not in a way where I was stalking him or anything unbalanced like that, but I admired his performance as Lex Luthor so much. It was amazing. Now, some people say to me, well, he had over seven years to do it. That's why to perfect what he was doing. That's not wrong, but there's no debate about Michael being the best Lex. Because he said, you know, when you see Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor, you'll probably say, I'm the best Lex. No, you'll, you'll probably say, he said, you'll probably say Nicholas Holt is the best Lex and I'm the second best Lex. Michael, that's never going to happen. Nicholas Holt will not be the best Lex Luthor. Because as I've said, you can't make good entertainment in an era of humanity that has this behaviour police. We have to be careful what we say, Michael. When I'm talking about Ezra Miller, I have to make sure I call him they, and sometimes I mistakenly don't. And I feel horrible, and I feel, have I just broken the law? Have I committed a hate crime? This is the era we're living in now. You're kind of checking what you're saying all the time. And I don't really give a shit what people think of me, but you've got to be careful, right? You don't want to be upsetting people. Not really. I mean, some people on YouTube make a career out of upsetting people. And that's good for them, but that's not who I am. I like to be respectful. So, Nicholas Holt will not be the best Lex Luthor. Now, think about this. We've had Kevin Spacey. Forget about the issues around Spacey. Great actor. Nowhere near as good as Lex Luthor than Michael Rosenbaum. Gene Hackman, a great Lex Luthor, nowhere near as good as Lex Luthor as Michael Rosenbaum. And here's the thing, Michael Rosenbaum became the best Lex Luthor on the Smallville pilot. Yes, that's right. The best Lex Luthor from the Smallville pilot from the moment he did that monologue in the Luthor mansion with Clark. When Clark brings back the keys to the truck Lex gave him, for saving his life. Do you believe a man can fly? And that's how the monologue starts. And Clark kind of mockingly looks at Lex and says, people can't fly, Lex. I did when my heart stopped. I flew over Smallville, blah, 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 and how the monologue goes. And I don't want anything to get in the way of our friendship. We have, you know, we've got a second start. We've got a second chance. I don't want anything to stand in the way 
of our friendship. I mean, obviously, um, it's, it's a bit longer than that. The words are a bit different, but you get what I mean. It's a beautiful fucking monologue. It's a beautiful monologue because of Mark Snow's music. It's a beautiful monologue because of the way Rosenbaum performs it. It's a beautiful fucking monologue because of the way Gotham Miller wrote it. They wrote another beautiful scene between Clark and Lana by the graveyard in that pilot. Those men were fucking geniuses and still are. They're doing Wednesday now. Yes, it's Gotham Miller that have made that a great show and not the starring actress who thinks it's all about her and what she wants. Sorry, sweetie, you're going to have to toe the line a bit because they're your bosses. You're the reason, they're the reason you're in a job. So I know it's difficult for all of you actors and people in New Hollywood to keep your mouth shut and not say dumb shit. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. So Michael Rosenbaum, there is no way that Nicholas Holt can take your crown as the best Lex Luthor. As I say, it's not a debate for me. You are the best Lex. You became the best Lex from the moment you performed that monologue in the pilot and you didn't look back. Look, people will say to you, well, there's this bad episode of Smallville. There's that bad episode of Smallville. Well, even I do it. I'm reviewing each episode on X in written form. I'm watching an episode a day. I watched Spell the other day and I mean, I was mocking the episode. But as I say, when you're pumping out 20 episodes of something, you've got to pump out the weaker episodes as well. But the weaker filler episodes are worth it for the outstanding episodes of Smallville. We've got more outstanding episodes than dud episodes of Smallville. And anyone who loves that show knows that already. It was a great show. It's a great adaption of the Superman myth. But what made Smallville such genius, it did something that normally doesn't work in pre-existing, you know, when you're telling a story about a pre-existing iconic character, breaking canon, changing the law. Smallville did both these things. They had Smallville living with a teenage Clark Kent and Martha and Jonathan. That never had been done in the comics or anywhere else. That broke the law, that broke canon, that Lois Lane, meets Clark Kent before he becomes Superman. That was a big cannon break and could have been utterly controversial, but it was done so well, it worked. And when we got to season eight, they started developing feelings for each other. Don't forget, she enters the show in season four and they don't really fall in love till series eight. That's amazing. That's something else that Smallville did so well. It catalogued both Clark's most important romantic relationships. The Lana relationship was done so well, it was cleverly done. Because you see a teenage relationship full of angst, because you're full of angst and drama when you're a kid. But Lana has this darkness within her as well, because she saw her parents, you know, killed by the meteor shower. And so that stayed with her and she couldn't let it go. She tried to be a good person for Clark. She got very frustrated with Clark because he was keeping his secrets and he came out to her. But in the end, she couldn't really handle Clark's purity. That, you know, the whole episode when she gets Clark's powers and she wants to kill Lex. And, you know, Clark's trying to explain to her, we can't, you know, taking people's lives is not our choice to make. That's Superman's mantra. It's a brilliant episode, but she doesn't get it. And ultimately, she takes Lex Luthor's kryptonite power suit and she becomes, she literally becomes poison to Clark. Interesting stuff. But then they catalogue the Lois Lane relationship and it's done beautifully again. So Smallville did so much. What about the episode when we meet Impulse, which is a member of the Flash family? They choose a brilliant actor, young actor at the time, Carl Gellner, He's blonde. Yes, a blonde flash. How amazing is that? Not Barry Allen, but still. And we saw him multi a multiple of multitude of times on Smallville. Brilliant. We got a solid Aquaman. By the way, an actor now who's doing very, very well. We had Justin Hartley as Oliver Queen. Without that run of Oliver Queen on Smallville, we would never have had an Arrow TV show. 
the achievements of Smallville are outstanding. Now, I understand what Michael is doing. He interviewed Nicholas Holt. Basically, that helps his platform. You know, the Inside of You podcast, I get that. But also, he's trying to do his friend James Gunn a solid. He interviewed James Gunn on the Inside of You podcast. He interviewed Nicholas Holt. While he's interviewing Nicholas Holt, he's telling, you know, he's being respectful. He's saying, yeah, you're going to be a great Lex. You know, I'm not Lex anymore. You're Lex, you know. And he wants his fans to give Nick love. And that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's also a way to try and get his Superman fans and those Lex Luthor fans over there to the new film. So they're desperate. And they will, you know, James Gunn will use any facet he has, like his good friend Michael Rosenbaum, to try and convince people that this is, you know, this is the new era. Forget about his Lex. It's time to move on with Nicholas Holt's Lex. Well, look, I love Nick Holt. I think Nick Holt's a lovely lad. I think he's a, one of the great actors. I've loved everything he's ever done. I think he's really, really good casting. Personally, I still would have cast Vincent DeFrontier, who plays Kingpin in Daredevil. That's the kind of Lex Luthor I would have liked to see. But that's not going to happen especially not in this era. So we'll see what kind of Lex Luthor we get. Some people believe that Lex Luthor will actually be the main villain in James Gunn's Superman movie, which wouldn't be something that I would want, but we'll see how that goes. We'll see. So it's clear that James Gunn has got Michael Rosenbaum trying to convince his fans that what he's doing is going to be awesome. And trust me, you're a Superman fan, you're a Lex Luthor fan. Well, you know, that's my good friend James Gunn and he's making a Superman film. This is Lex Luthor and he's going to be great. So look, I'm not an idiot. I've lived in LA. I've worked within the industry. My father was a big player within the industry. So I'm not a fucking idiot. This is why I try and advise my subscribers about the industry. And I try and show you the red flags and I try and show you the good things. Nobody really believes me, and it's not like I've got a lot of views anyway, I'm literally talking to myself. To be fair, I've always enjoyed talking to myself because nobody else will listen to me. So it's fine if you're watching this shit, you're watching it. If you're not, I couldn't give a shit. But, yeah. And so, yeah, the whole thing coming up about, you know, Nicholas Hulk, you know, us calling Nicholas Hulk the best Lex. I will never call anyone the best Lex Luthor but Michael Rosenbaum. It will never be done again, because right now we are in the wrong era. All they're going to do with characters like Lex Luthor now is create them, you know, write them as toxic males to show how bad men are, to show everyone that it's men that are, that are the problem and women who are the innocent victims. That's all they're going to do here. I don't expect anything else. It's just the era that we live in. James Gunn is a capable writer-director. He could give us another great villain. He does great villains in his CBMs. I like everything he done with villains, you know, in Guardians 1, Guardians 2 with Ego, the Living Planet. I thought he did a great job. The villain in Guardians 3, wow. I mean, that literally was a fucking bad man, right? So it's not like he can't do dark villains. It's not like James Gunn is incapable of doing darkness. So, you know... Like, doing something like Dead Man is crazy. Um, and I don't know much about Dead Man. I know a little bit about the character. But we don't know if he's actually doing Dead Man, by the way. So, as I say, Smallville is, is as I say, is second in my favourite Superman live-action adaptions ranking. Superman 78, Smallville, Man of Steel. They're in my top three. I, you know, I don't believe anything can get in there, you know. And then I'd say after, I'd, I'd probably say after Man of Steel, you'd probably say maybe Superman 2, maybe Superman Returns and things like that. But yeah, they're in my top three. And Smallville comes just behind Superman 78 and what it means to me. And as I said on the top of the show, Smallville meant a lot to me because it came at a time where, as I've said before, that, you know, that flame that love for Simon I had was dimming. It, I didn't lose my love and my adulation for the character, but, you know, that burning sensation was dimming. And 
so Smallville was very, very important for me. It really made me the DC fan I am today. It really educated me. I said on my spell review, I didn't know that Superman had a weakness to magic until I saw Spell and Clark. And I remember Clark saying to Jonathan, Dad, magic is real. I've seen it. And even worse, it can hurt me. And I thought, that blew my mind. Even though it's a weird, strange episode. I mean, Lana Lang is an evil witch. I mean, come on. I mean, it's not, it's not a terrible episode, but I mean, come on. I think we were getting a bit, you know, a bit silly there. But still, as I say, you're pumping out 20 episodes. You need the silly episodes. And it's good for the actors to play different entities, especially when you're on a long-running show. So I get it, right? Um, so, but Smallville did so many... Smallville did so many things, like, like the, you know, the movie event, you know, Absolute Justice, written by Jeff Johns. Legion is an outstanding 40 minutes of television where we meet the Legion. They come from the future, they want to kill Chloe because Brainiac's taken her body, and we see Clark fighting and, you know, saying, look, we're not going to kill my friend, not only because she's my friend, because there's always a better way than killing someone, and that is who Superman is, you know. So the Jeff John Smallville episodes were very, very special. But then you've got people, someone like John Glover playing Lex's dad and the twisted relationship they had and the whole Shattered and Asylum episodes. And even what they were doing in season one was very, very pioneering. From the first time I saw Smallville, I knew it was a pioneering show. It was, as I say, it was brave, it was bold. The special effects were outstanding for the time. A lot of the effects are still very, very good. I think in the early season one, some of the things sometimes were a bit ropey, but it's a low-budgeted TV show. Smallville had a lower budget than Arrowverse, for example, but most of its special effects were outstanding. Again, you're making a show. You're rushing it out. You know, you don't take your time on a TV show. You don't get many takes. It's rush, 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 next, blah, 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 you know. And that's what they do. You don't know where you are by the end of the season. But, you know, so what they were able to achieve was brilliant. But at the time, they were trying to come up with, you know, different directors wanting to make a Superman film. It wasn't happening. We were going to get Kevin Smith's Superman Lives, which was going to be directed by Tim Burton. Never happened. Kevin Smith's script was thrown away as well, but we never got a Superman movie. So we got a TV show, which is as good as a Superman movie. And the vision for it was brilliant. It really was. And it told the story of how Clark Kent becomes Superman and how Lex Luthor becomes the evil megalomaniac we know and love. And they did it in a chapterized, step by step. They created some brilliant original characters like Chloe Sullivan, played by the multi-talented Alison Mack. I know she was a naughty girl, but it isn't for me to forgive her because I wasn't one of her victims. Alison meant a lot to me during the Smallville run, and she always will. Chloe meant a lot to me, and Alison's performances were an element of maturity I've never seen in a younger actor before. Amazing. Simply amazing. Everyone on the show, we have Jensen Eccles, who plays Dean Winchester in Supernatural, who played Dean Winchester in Supernatural. Apparently, they could be coming back for more Supernatural. So he was a regular for the entirety of season four, which I'm re-watching daily right now. So many accomplishments, so many achievements. So I love Michael Rosenball, but I think what he needs to remember is that, yeah, James Gunn is his friend, and he's helping him out, and I understand that, but never sell short what you achieved. Not just what you achieved, but the whole Smallville team achieved. It really was a unique show, because when Michael and Tom and the rest of them are on their rocking chairs at 80 years old, then they will really value what they did even more. Smallville was an amazing show. We had episodes like Rosetta, guest starring Christopher Reeve. Not wheeling past in a Stanley cameo, playing a proper role. We had Margot Kidder, guest starring a couple of episodes. 
who played my favourite Lois Lane. By the way, Erica Durant, who played Lois Lane in Smallville, is my joint favourite Lois Lane in live action with Margot Kidder. So they did so many great things. We had Mark McClure play Dax Ur, who played Jimmy Olsen in the Christopher Reeves Superman movies. We had Dean Kane, we had Terry Hatcher playing Lois Lane's mother. Terry played Lois Lane in Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. Dean Kane played, you know, Dr. Curtis Knox, a villain trying to revive his dying wife in an episode called Cure. Amazing. You know, we had a brilliant version of Brainiac. It wasn't comic book accurate by any means, but they had to use what they could in terms of their budget, and they did a really good job. I've said this a billion times, you can't have a Brainiac, you know, with those prosthetics on a show like Smallville. It all costs money, and to have the skull ship, it all costs money, right? And I think people were accused of being overambitious with things like Darkseid and Doomsday. So I think when Alan Mars were running the show, I think they absolutely understood that. Smallville did take inspiration and borrowed a lot from Buffy and Roswell, and that's great. It's great to take inspiration from other things that have come before you. So Smallville is a very special thing, and I would love to see this animated series, but I fear we never will. But make no mistake, James Gunn's Superman film is going to have to go a long way to get anywhere near what Smallville achieved. And Nicholas Holt, a wonderful actor, lots of respect for Nick. I have no negative feelings towards him at all. I wish him all the best. I'm a huge Superman fan. I want what he's doing to work and be great. But I don't want to hear talk about anyone being the best Lex Luthor but Michael Rosenbaum. And I don't want to hear that talk from Michael Rosenbaum himself. Yes, James Gunn is your friend, Michael, but don't undersell what you achieved. You achieved something special. You meant something, so, you meant so much, what you did meant so much to me. The way you played him, the way he was this guy that nobody believed in, saw, you know, saw negatively. You know, I felt that way growing up. A lot of people identified with Lex before he becomes evil, of course. And that brings a lot of interesting themes to the show. People kind of looked up to Lex as much as they looked up to Clark Kent. And that's very interesting because they did what was interesting about Smallville, they didn't give us a one dimensional Lex Luthor. He had so many elements. He started off as a good guy who wanted to be friends with Clark, who helped Clark and Lorna and Chloe. He wanted to be their friend, even though he was slightly older. And, you know, it was a very interesting way. And going at Lex, we saw touches at the dark of the darkness. You know, the easy thing to do with Lex Luthor on Smallville was to make him a playboy with hair, who was good looking and smooth until he becomes, you know, kind of douchey and evil. That would have been lazy, but what Gotham Miller and Rosenbaum did with Lex Luthor was full of so much depth. There was the themes of a mental breakdown in asylum. There were so many things that they did and Rosenbaum's performances were amazing. I would have expected him to have won a multitude of Oscars by now. I predicted it. Where he is right now doing those podcasts, and I'm sure he's happy, and I hope he's content, because I want him to be happy, because he gave me so much happiness via his performances on Smallville. But I don't know why he's not acting anymore. I don't know, you know, he did direct a movie and star in a movie as well. I forgot what it was called. But he hasn't done anything since and that's interesting to me and um, I'd love to interview him I would I couldn't afford him I wouldn't know how you do it he's in America I'm in Cyprus but I'd love to interview him on this channel because I really do look up to him and I what I would say to him is never yet yeah, support your friend James Gunn why not no one can tell you not to do that but what I would say is never to support James Gunn never undersell what you and everyone achieved on Smallville. I think that's very, very important. Smallville has a legacy. We, you know, there's Superman media and Superman films and TV, it's all out there. We haven't seen what James Gunn's going to do. James Gunn is going to have to prove that he can do a great version of Superman and Lex 
Smallville proved it. The Lois and Clark show have proven it. Superman and Lois has proven it. The Christopher Reeve Superman has proven it. And this is the thing. Christopher Reeve is the best Superman. Henry Cavill's a great Superman, right? Tom Welling is a great Superman, a great Clark Kent for that generation. And even for me, who was 28 when Smallville first aired its pilot. So we've seen what, what those people did so fantastically well. Now James Gunn has to prove that he can give us another great version of Superman. And no tricks or PR are going to work. You're actually going to have to do the work, James. Good luck.